afternoon. Um, yesterday, the DFA and Enya Luko were um, obviously giving their evidence to the uh, parliamentary inquiry into what actually happened with Mark Sampson, etc., uh, etc. Et and it has transpired that there are several things that were going on there. And I'm going to read the article. And um, there are serious doubts over FA bosses should continue his evidence as questioned. Um, that includes this guy called Greg Clark and a guy called Martin Glenn. Uh, apparently there I only saw a little snippet of, of the the pro proceedings yesterday if you want to actually uh, watch them they are on BBC and Sky News websites and they're up there in the public domain but basically apparently they gave a shambolic performance <laughs> to MPs um, They were it was basically with the discrimination case against Mark Sampson that, that he was cleared for he got fired for something else um, and there were some serious doubts whether they were the right people to take the FA forward. Uh, there was also a few other bits and pieces in here about um, other things. Um, and the former FA chairman, David Bernstein, who I don't like either, uh, said it was an accident waiting to happen. Uh, he stepped down in like 2013. And he's saying that the FA needs serious, serious reform. Well, he's part of the problem because he was an old old cheese there anyway so there you go um there are other issues obviously uh former players male and female are saying the fa needs overhaul and um yeah what else is there um the initial problem came from when any luco was uh asked to give her feedback on a on an internal paper about like integration and how performance things and stuff like that and she basically uh, showed some negative things about Mark Sampson basically um, basically uh, Mark Sampson was denied being a racist but the funny thing is the funny thing is with the whole thing um, only apart from the two players uh, Enya Luko and uh, one of her teammates the thing is the rest of the squad are in favour of him. So to me, it just sounds like two players got dropped and had a bit of chip on their shoulder. But that's personally just me. There is obviously more of the story because um, he got sacked literally a week after all this came out. Anyway, for another incident which we've covered on this channel. Um, Drew Spence is the other teammate's name. Um, but. The FA didn't obviously investigate these claims properly. Uh, blah, 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 blah. What else is there? The FA basically have said several things, um, but their evidence has now been questioned. Uh, and it's they're basically being accused of blackmailing uh, the ex player because she was given a severance package. And oh, let me just get out of this page because it's annoying me now a little bit. And they withheld a second part of the payment because of comments she was alleged to have made when she was covering the Euros or whatever it was. And they wouldn't pay her a full severance package. Now, uh, I have had other issues with the FA myself um, about certain things because Wembley, for some reason, half the seats are for these FA member things. The middle tier always appears to a half time empty because these are corporate seats. Um, the amount of money they take out your ticket price. Uh, they claim that, that they the kick out racism campaign is, is working. Um, in that case, if the kick out racism campaign is working and they, their anti discrimination policies are working, why haven't more gay, transgender, um, bisexual, lesbian, whatever, you know, why aren't more gay players coming out? Why does it take for Thomas Hitzelsberger to retire before he comes up? So if the racism and the anti-discrimination campaigns are working, why are we not why are we not getting a uh, first fully openly gay or bisexual male player playing since uh, fashioning? So it's been twenty five years since fashioning died. Um, why have we not got an openly gay player or openly bisexual player? Well, there are female players who are openly gay and bisexual, and that's. Clearly, another issue there is that the women's game feels comfortable enough, say, with their sexuality or their their gender or their ethnicity, but the men's game seems to be all no 
can't do this. Um, so there are issues there. If the FA is so keen on getting youth development, why are like, our youth academies either shutting down at Huddersfield, and the FA haven't even blinked an eye at that, but for the Women's Super League, from next year, all the clubs must have an academy. Well, if the men's game is being forced to shut them down... They, they govern the men's game in one way and the women's game in another. Because the Women's Super League, they now stating to be... They have all the teams must be 100% professional and must all have academy systems. Well, if a men's team is shutting down its academy because they can't afford it, and they're not getting the help from the FA, and they're not being reprimanded, that just seems like a two-tier system to me. They're, and the, the way they dealt with the Sam Allardyce... Sam Allardyce is... is threatening to take them to task over how his dismissal was handled. Yes, we know he made some stupid comments to the media. and an Well, he wasn't aware they were media. He thought they were actually investors. But they were taken out of context, according to him, because we only, as as fans and as the public, saw a little snippet of what the undercover report was actually recorded of Mr Allardyce being a tit. And I don't particularly like a lot of these sports people as people. I've met some of them, um, and they are pretty abhorrent entitled wankers and I'm saying that because as a kid I met a few of them were just retired players and future managers um, simply because a mum's, my mum's friend needed someone to witness the signing of a contract because he was a lawyer and he needed an independent witness and that was my mother. I happened to be friends with his kids. In a pub I met Alan Pardew, Steve Carpel and another football manager whose name I actually forget. The way they came across to a young, a young sports fan, and I am obsessed about sport. Um, looking back on it, God, they were tossers. I'm, I'm saying that as now as an adult looking back on on that day. Um, if I was to meet them again, I would not go. Can you walk off, please? I'll tell them jog up, because um, they had that entitled air about them, like, oh yes, I earn so much money. Look at me, and they 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 forget where they come from. A lot of these. People come from working class backgrounds. Now the FA is run by a bunch of old middle class lawyers who don't live in the real world because they're on big money. Some of these FA executives are on stupid money. Stupid money. Now we're the richest football association in the world, yet the FA is actually chronically short of cash. Uh, they, they, they have the assets like Wembley, but they don't have the actual money in the bank, so to speak. Um... The whole system needs to be shaken up, needs fresh faces, fresh impetus, because if if Bernstein, the ex-chief executive, was saying it's a disaster waiting to happen, and he was saying that oh, and he left four years ago, and to be honest, he's just another pen pusher. He, a lot of these FA executives have never kicked a football in their life, or if they have, they haven't done it since school. None of them have played in the professional or even in the semi-professional ranks. So they're not as if like they've they've played the game at a high level. Um, they're just administrators who push pens. They don't know how the game works, how fans interact with, with their, their, their clubs, how club membership works, how community... They don't, don't have a clue. And the whole Allardyce thing, he's taken the task because he feels they overlooked evidence in his defence. And... And he was unfairly treated. Um, the whole Mark Sampson thing is another kettle of fish entirely because he hasn't broken any law himself. Um, the whole any local allegations are two players making allegations against their ex-manager. And he might have made some ill-timed jokes. The thing is, they got dropped from his squad and he brought in younger players. And the team were doing really, really well. And other players have stated that this is going to have a negative impact on the future of English women's football. The FA rules on the Women's Super League saying that all teams must now have academies to be classed in the first two tiers of women's football. When Huddersfield themselves, the men's team, are withdrawing their academy because A, they can't find the local talent because they've been squeezed out by bigger clubs who want who've got a bit more financial clout, even though Huddersfield are doing quite well this season and have a good structure in place and good ownership and a good fan base, they can't recruit enough local lads to play in their youth squads. Because the big clubs like like your Newcastles, I will say that because they have a very good youth system, the Man United, your Liverpools, your Chelsea's, are pinching their youth at a lower level and go, right, we'll take you, and breaching rules and getting away with it.
and the FA is not standing up for a club. By its demanding of the women's teams, you must have an academy to be to be allowed, and you must be full time to be allowed in the women's super league. Well, let me tell you this: if you go in the conference, half the teams are full time and half the teams aren't. But that doesn't mean they get thrown out. There's double standards here. There's there's there is clearly issues within the governance of the FA. Uh, what happened yesterday in in the uh, MP Select Committee just shows how out of touch they really are. Um, they did not listen to the allegations. Whether the allegations are proven or not, and I'm not saying Annie Luco is a liar, but there are things we are not hearing. And Mark Sampson wasn't in there yesterday. He might be in there today. It has been rumoured that he will be giving his own evidence to the Select Committee at Westminster. Um, and I normally try and say keep politics and sport separate, but in this case, you can't because the FA is the governing body of football in this country. And the same with the Rugby Football League, and the same with the Rugby Union and the RFU. They are governing bodies, and throughout all of the governing bodies of all the sports in this country, there are serious failings when it comes to finances, to player welfare, to uh, basically a two-tier system, women's and men's games being exactly the same sport, with exactly the same rules, being governed differently. Um, and there's too many of these administrators who don't even play the sport anyway involved in running the sport. There's not enough current or ex-players involved in how the sport should be run. Um, they, they don't seem to listen to advice from ex-players and managers and coaches and officials in how the game should be run. They come up with all these ideas like, oh, we should change the halves to 30 minutes, we'll do the golden goal, all this crap. Yeah, all these governing bodies of football, especially FIFA, corrupt as anything because most of the people involved in running it were not ex-players. They were politicians who liked lining their pockets with dirty money. UEFA. Platini, yeah, an ex-player, but he was crooked as anything um, because he'd been in the system too long. You need fresh faces and you need reform, and unfortunately they don't seem to want reform. And until they do, um, we're going to see English talent being left behind at academy level because the clubs can just bring in foreign kids um, and breach transfer rules, which Chelsea regularly do and seem to get away with it. They're going to breach financial fair play. The fit and proper persons test is a joke because it doesn't work because it's been flouted so many times. Then the FA does nothing, and it claims it's kick it out racism campaign is working. Well, then why the hell is Elia Luko going to an MP select committee saying she was racially abused by her manager? Why are there no openly gay male players in the game? Clearly, their anti-discrimination policies are really, really working, and the kick it out is really working. Not, and they claim it is, and they give us this false propaganda. It's not. Anyway, I'm going to leave that video there. I'm seriously annoyed with the effort, and I have been for quite some time. I'm not disputing the, the players on the pitch. When it comes down to the, the where my team played this weekend, and if we win 5-0 or lose 5-0, I'll still support Blackburn. I will just be more upset because the Venkies are still in charge and have, don't know how to run the club. And this is another thing I have an issue with, is a lot of owners have no idea how sports works. It's the same with football, ice hockey, rugby, league and union, cricket, you name it. A lot of these sports owners are clueless. They are businessmen, they are pen pushers, and they're after making money. They don't give a toss about the fans, the club, the, the community, the players, whatever. They are interested in the dollar. And a lot of them have dodgy tax dealings. So until the fans start doing their protest movements, but instead of just like putting up little kick it out, whatever, get Ashley out, Wenger out, so they actually make the stadiums empty and embarrassing for like, you know, the club because the TV executives go, well, where's all your, where's all your fans gone? I thought you had a great fan base. Until we start marching with our feet and our wallets, sport is going to be badly run. Anyway, if you want, uh, well, I've run enough. If you are. Uh, like and subscribe, that'd be great. If you can just pass through and watch the video, that's still positive. Um, find me on Twitter, as the Sports Buffin. I'm going to upload this now. Um, I'll have some more videos for you later. Uh, I was going to do this video yesterday, unfortunately I waited till today. Um, even then, it just still seems pretty shocking how the FA performed yesterday. They, they've let themselves down. Um, they basically have contradictory evidence and they look like a joke, really. Um, but, thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.